Hi, welcome back to Salty Beaver Explorers. After last winter and suffering a few things like a car accident and we've been a little immobile, we're back at it. And Ron has been working on our Armax. Well, here I am, the silent half of Salty Beaver that never talks very much on the camera. Here we are with our new Armax and a few of the things we've added to it to make the, uh, make the experience a little better. The uh, original machine when we were first out on a couple of night rides, we noticed that the headlights on it were really good, but they ended at about six feet. So we've had some time to manage to fix that. So in the front of our machine now, we have a couple of spotlights mounted just above the winch. Uh, we have a nice light bar, 20 inch on the top of the uh, cab. It's uh, 126 watt. We've added a few fun lights on the back. We've put on a couple of two foot whip lights. These whip lights have multiple colors and multiple patterns, a number of things like that to keep it interesting. Uh, we did not install a Yamaha box. Uh, we went with the DZ uh, truck box. Uh, it was quite a bit less expensive and actually has more space inside. So that's a, a good addition to the machine. One of the largest problems that we had with our R-Max when we first got it was mud. Mud flew in the cab, mud flew on the seats, mud flew over and all over Salty Beaver. And so we had to fix that. And how we managed to do that was we purchased these uh, extensions that we had put on on both the front and the back of the machine. These are VIP Air UTV Fender Flap Extensions. Um, we got them through Revco, uh, no sponsorship involved. Uh, so far, we've uh, we've noticed incredible change in the amount of mud that we get hit with. So, uh, pretty much the best purchase that we got on the machine. It had the bends in it already at certain spots. All we had to do was there were two or three bolts that were part of the arm axe that we took out. Uh, you fix them with those, and then there were a number of push pins that that come along with the system also that went in. So it was very quick installation. Went along fairly seamlessly. Easy to do. Also aftermarket when we did buy it we, it, we ordered a windshield extra when we bought it and we have the spare tire and holder in the back. So, I think we're fairly well outfitted. Um, most of the wiring that we did do, I tried to leave it on the inside just so that I have better access to it if I need to do it so I didn't run it through the console or underneath. Um, but wiring it up was pretty easy. Yamaha was really good. They have a bunch of accessories pre-wired into the system. Uh, an example of one is right here. Uh, they come with a, a, a hook, so you can buy the other half of this and wire it in. So underneath, behind the dash here, which only have a few screws and bolts to take out to remove the dash, you can get inside and you can run all your wires. So from the auxiliary that came from Yamaha, I ran to the switches and then from the switches, it came back into the system here there's a relay here for one of them. I put a relay here, wherever I could fit one that was comfortable. And then I think there's, an, there's another relay here. So everything's on relays. <clears throat> and then uh, all of that goes into a, a power box here where I have feed into the battery, out of the battery, and then everything that goes to uh, accessories comes out of that. So all separate wired, um, seems to be working fine. I haven't seen anything not working on it, so I think I might have done it right. Yay, Yay. you did it right. Um, we also installed a RAM setup on the dash. This is for our phones, for using with uh, the software we use for, for traveling in the bush. 
And we also added for their enjoyment a little bit of music. So we have an Eco Xbox SE26 speaker system. It has eight speakers and uh, has a multitude of colors and other fun things that we can add to it. So that seems to be pretty good. All of this was wired in with five pin switches. Uh, the power to the switch comes through a, a fitting that was already on the Armax. And then from the switch, everything goes to relays and everything's wired in with relays. So uh, seems to be pretty good. My understanding was the stator in the Armax was about 600 watts, 650-ish. I, I can't confirm that, but that's what I think it is. And I believe it takes about 300 watts for it to, to run the machine alone. So it gives you a little bit of spare. Um, we've had all of the lights and accessories on on the machine and it doesn't draw on our voltage. So we must be right in the right, right ballpark. And we'd actually ordered lights that were in the area where we expected them to be low enough to not over exceed that state. <laughs> For the lights yeah and this is for the sound. eco gear for the sound thanks for watching our video and seeing what kind of modifications that we did to the r max if you like this video give it a thumbs up feel free to leave us a comment as we'd love to hear from you and feel free to subscribe for more videos about driving our RMAX and videos around Canada. Also, we'll be leaving a description below about all the products that we put onto the machine. Smash that like button! <laughs>